The steps at Rock Art Ranch in Chevlon Canyon is a site people have been coming to for thousands and thousands of years. They left a record of their visits in the rock art on the canyon walls, most of which dates to the archaic and basket maker periods, which ended about 1,500 years ago. Darlene Brinkerhoff, a certified rock art recorder with a team of volunteers, recorded every glyph in this part of the canyon over a six-year period. Darlene has also recorded rock art in Chaco Canyon and multiple sites in Arizona, as well as working on excavations as a crew chief and being a contributor to the upcoming final report on the Multikiva site archaeological project. There are so many glyphs here that they were recorded as galleries, huge collections of glyphs, with the galleries then divided down into panels. There are over 40 galleries and thousands of individual petroglyphs here. Although the glyphs are recorded as scientific research, this is a sacred site to modern-day Hopi and other Pueblo tribes who still come here on pilgrimages. This is the main concentration of the petroglyphs in, in the Chevlon Steps area. Uh, we've called it the Chevlon Steps for, for years. Uh, it has, some years ago, the owner, Brantley Baird, has named it the um, Rock Art Ranch area. So if you ever hear those two different names of this place, they, they coincide. Now, um, the canyon is actually a U-shape bend in the canyon at this particular area, and it's also a natural access site. As we start going down, you will see the natural steps into the canyon. So we believe, naturally, the, the prehistoric people, this is where one place they were entering, because there's other areas in the canyon that are just, you know, too high and no access points. Now, uh, years ago when we'd, when we'd come down here and look at the petroglyphs, uh, Mr. Bear didn't have this gated off and locked off at the time. So we would come down here and look at the petroglyphs and there would actually be people down here shooting at the glyphs and breaking bottles down in the water in the canyon. Well, since Mr. Baird has um, controlled access with the gates and the fences, it has helped immensely to, uh, to protect this site. Um, so there's no more glass in the, in the water, uh, no more vandalism on the petroglyphs. Uh, the natural flora and fauna has come back. Although with the floodwaters going through, every time you go down in this canyon, uh, it looks a little different because perhaps the, the, the uh, you know, the water, the stream, the floodwaters have changed the course of the stream here down below. These are antelope figures, three in a row. Can you see how oh, yeah. huge yeah, they yeah, are? Yeah. Big square bodies, the face, mm -hmm. the horns, the legs, three of them in a row. And then if you look closely, uh, you can see some other petro petroglyphs uh, here that are kind of heavily eroded. Because this is a very nice one. We believe this is a female figure here. She has hair whirls. Um, now these are probably animal tracks, antelope or deer tracks coming along. Um, and also she is, right next to the right of her is a big water bird. You can see his little spurs on his legs. And it looks like he is, maybe has a fish skeleton or a fish in his mouth. The water here also contains, the stream here also contains <clears throat> some um, endangered species that the uh, biologist comes out every so often to, to check. Uh, I do believe the Arizona chub is in this canyon. But what's neat about this place, you can come back to Chevlon Steps here and you can actually find something different every time you come and you can see why. It's just kind of overwhelming and immense. Uh, you can study a panel and find all kinds of things. That's what was nice when we all came back and recorded this site, officially recorded this site with string grid drawings and, and photographs and of course all the mapping and all the the data that we take um, off each panel. But once you're studying and working on a panel here uh, that's when you just see all these other elements come out, especially when you draw them to scale. All these elements come out that sometimes you don't see uh, in a photo. 
And then right in there in the crack is kind of an unusual figure, kind of square headed figure. Mm -hmm. And we actually have just two of those in the canyon. I don't know if there's anything significant about it, but there's one basically on, on uh, this south end of the canyon, and then there's one at the north end of the canyon where the, where the petroglyphs um, end up. Uh, we're gonna go on to some of the main places because like I said, you could, you could stay here all day long and just pick out figures uh, all through here. And some of them are so old, they're repatinated black to where they're very hard to see. As we go along too, um, when you do look at some figures, I'd like you to pay attention and look for the ones that are superimposed, where there are ones on top of the other, and also if they have additional grinding. Pretty soon here we'll be seeing some that have additional uh, grinding cupules into. Now a lot of people say, well, you can see the glyphs all the way up the side there, to about halfway up this cliff, but a lot of people wonder, well, how did they get up there? Well, they're, they're could have been, they used ladders, they used ropes. Plus there's also the possibility that maybe a rock ledge was there that has fallen, or that the land in the stream bed was higher there for some reason. And then this particular panel has the, um, we've always called the birthing scene. But um, in the last so many years, actually some people believe it's called um, Mother of Game. And usually she is on a, a panel associated with animal figures. But you can see her Hopi hair whirls. And you can also see big cupules <laughs> into her chest area and on her legs and on her arms. So we're beginning to see the cupule areas that perhaps um, had additional ceremonial uh, symbolism. Now to the right of her, you can see like a bear claw figure. Uh, a quadruped animal there, some dots. Now you can uh, also see some bear paw figures on the left of that uh, four-lined squiggle figure there. Also, to the right of that one, you can see another figure. He's, he's got maybe a headdress or something, but you can see his chest has like a big oval cupule cut out. And then his head area has a big cupule area that has also had additional grinding. Now, you can see the bear paw figure up to the left of the stick figure that's facing upstream with the big arms and, and toes and legs. Uh, and above him is probably uh, some type, it's possibly that it's some type of female figure as well. Because a lot of times that's how they show their, indicate their chest is on, on the side. There's a big, quadruped up there uh, kind of in the recess of the cliff and he has some very deep cupules inside his body and of course you can see the anthropomorphs around him and a concentric circle above another anthropomorph and another uh, bear paw figure towards the top and you can see some other glyphs in here with cupules uh, there's an anthropomorph in there with a cupule in his head area and quadrupeds. But one of the main neat figures in this gallery is, I believe that's a uh, cloud symbol and a rain symbol. The zigzags there, that's indicating clouds and rain. Generally, we do not interpret the petroglyphs when we're recording rock art. Um, and that saying is like what I'm saying is the um, ancestors of these petroglyphs, they're the ones that know the real meaning. Now that doesn't mean we can't have fun and look at it and say what we think it might be. Um, also, we need to always look, sometimes people just look at the one element at a time. And we need to look at the whole panel itself, gallery itself, and see if there's a, uh, a whole meaning to the picture. Which, you know, is very possibly is what they meant, instead of just one particular glyph at a time.
right through here is where the petroglyphs start. Now this one, I've I thought that uh, could be a possibility of a rabbit clan. There is a Hopi rabbit clan. Maybe those are Hopi ears or, or maybe they're just antenna. But this anthropomorph here basically starts the, the uh, petroglyphs on this west side of the canyon. At one time, I, when I got certified, I thought I could record this site by myself. <laughs> when I made my first string grid, I threw it up on this particular gallery right here and the string grid was just lost. The, the panel is so huge with um, all the different anthropomorphs that I realized that it was, um, was going to be a very huge undertaking. So that's when I asked the uh, petroglyph recording group in Flagstaff. But you can see all the anthropomorphic figures in this gallery and a lot of them with zigzag lines. Now, my opinion, I think those zigzag lines in the torso are indicating uh, lightning. So perhaps these are, um, are like Katina figures praying for rain, which the Hopis still do in their, in their dances, is praying for rain. Now, these with, with the triangular bodies and the decorated torsos, we um, call those majestic type figures. And um, that name was um, adopted by Eckhart Malatke because he um, suggested that a lot of the petroglyphs in our region to this area are, are called the Palavayu, and I believe that means Red River, Palavayu. It's a Hopi word. But there you see another majestic type figure holding some type of weapon or tool. He has ear bobs and some type of horn, horn or headdress on top. Now this area right here, I always like to show people because that is, of course, one of our other relative dating techniques, uh, superimposition and also patina differential because you can see this one's lighter and this one's darker above it. So obviously this petroglyph is newer than the one on top. Now this one here, you can see like his ribs, like skeletal type. Now these are the ones I was talking about earlier that we believe are earlier than the majestic type anthropomorphs or zoomorphs. And if you look closely, you can see that he is mirrored by the same figure on this side. See how their horns are facing each other? You guys see it? See his legs, his skeletal, his arms, and his neck is bent and his horns are going to the left. I will also say the majority of the anthropomorphs in this canyon are male. And that's indicated on many of them. Now there are female petroglyphs in this canyon. Like I showed you some across the way that I believe are, are female figures, but not as prevalent of course as the, as the males. Nicole, I believe her name is Nicole Mathwich from U of A. She did the paleozoology of the Homolovies, which also includes this, er this area that we're in. And um, she told me that Prehistorically, when the Hitsatsanim ancestors lived in this area, that, of course, before we brought in the cattle and the, and the sheep, that the grasslands were, were everywhere. That if we'd have been walking out above today somewhere, the grass would be up to our armpits. And naturally, uh, of course, many of you know that antelope are grassland figures, or grassland animals. And so she said, in, prehistorically, the antelope were, you'd have seen them everywhere here. Of course, there are not as many because, again, you know, the grasslands are, are gone so much with the bringing of the cattle and the sheep into, into the country, into this area. But that's what, um, why there are so many antelope figures, I believe, in the canyon petroglyphs here. And again, we said, I said that there's an elk that was in the canyon here 
uh, the, before the Miriam elk. I believe there are, um, especially downstream when we get to the hunting scene, there are um, elk figures with the big, huge racks. And across the canyon, we also did see, we think, evidence of the longhorn sheep at one time. But you can see some of the glyphs go way up to this top patinaed area. Wow. Now this one up on top here on the right is, don't you think that's an elk figure? Oh yeah. With his horns? Definitely. Then you can see a snake figure maybe in the, in the negative to behind him to the left. Mm -hmm. Maybe more rain symbols. And, and that one too looks like a longhorn sheep, it doesn't does. it? I'm glad you think that, so that I'm not the only one that thinks, <laughs> thinks that. Now this panel to the left here of this gallery, for years and years we've called this the elephant figure. Well, um, it took me a while, a few years of staring at it, to come up with my own conclusion, and I believe it is a raptor. I believe it's an eagle, because he has his pronounced beak, wings, tail feathers, and talons. Oh. That's what I believe that is. And get this, oh, there we go. Okay, there's that, I was telling you about that possible netting with the weights on it. It could be something else, but that's, that's what I believe it is. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right there. And then, oh, right, right. Huh. And then once you get under through over there, see those to the left, Dennis? Yeah. Yeah, that, all those whole galleries up there, if you can get to them, would be great. You know, again, another rain symbol, lightning symbol coming from his foot. But there's three anthropomorphs up there, but that particular one on the bottom, you know, has some type of horns or headdress. We actually, our recording team, um, they actually had to have someone repel down to these to get, to get the data and do the drawings of those panels up there. Uh, but a lot of times when the lighting is different, I see a lot of different stuff here too. When I was here a couple of weeks ago, um, because the lighting is different this time of year, I actually found some uh, glyphs here that I hadn't noticed before. But there's glyphs all through here. A lot of these are wearing out. But this particular, this particular panel right here uh, is what we've always called the Cinderella panel. However, after Standing many hours here, um, drawing these petroglyphs in this particular area and seeing it so many times that I have a, a possible um, theory on this, on this Cinderella panel that I believe it is, this part is a bear paw, of course attached to the anthropomorph. So I think it's some type of indication of a transformation of a bear into a human or a human into a, a bear paw. And it is known uh, in way back time that uh, even before prehistoric time uh, about in other countries as well, the transformation between animals and, and humans. Across the canyon here from this ledge from the left all the way following the ledge to the right of this triangular piece of uh, cliff face there with star looking figures on it. This is what we call the hunting scene. You can see the quadrupeds, elk, um, antelope traveling all across that ledge with the anthropomorphs behind them 
nowhere at this canyon other than this that those particular galleries up there um, show this um, this extent of the zoomorphs and the hunters. Oh, look at the nice reflection in the water of the canyon walls. You can see the water rippling. If it's, if it's mucky, you can't see that nice reflection, and if the water's going too fast, you can't see that nice reflection there. You see that large incline over there, and that is basically the end of the line for the petroglyphs in this main concentration of the canyon. Um, remember I told you about that square-headed looking figure? Yeah. Coming down the stairs? There's the second one I told you about. So, and it looks, you know, it's another possibility. It could be a female, maybe not, but it looks like if it's a she, doesn't it look like she's sitting on that shelf yeah. where, they, where they put her? It does. And then there's anthropomorphs again, um, decorated headdresses you can see on that uh, vertical wall and also majestic looking figures with decorated torsos on that vertical wall. And then you see a lot of um, incline. And the incline coming down, you can see a lot of the glyphs there, all the way across and all the way down. Now this part of the incline on the left is an area that I had to, to draw. Um, Don Weaver actually, uh, from the vertical wall on the on the uh, east side there to an area over here that we had to uh, be tied on to the uh, to the cable so we wouldn't fall. At the top of those zigzags you can see there's like cupules or circles there. Yeah. Okay while I was standing there I thought about you know what when it rains that whole area comes in is a waterfall. I think the water's coming down the waterfall, hitting the cupules, and that's the indication of it in those zigzags, uh, water replenishing the stream. And then if you look to the right of all those zigzags on the same black area, kind of about where it's cracked, recessed, spalled off, there is a rain looking figure again in there. Oh yeah, that's a figure, not just a... Yes, I think it's, um, it might be a rain god figure. Mm -hmm. You see that really nice geometric right in the corner? We call it the tire track. Tire track? The tire track. Of course it's, of course it's not that. Some of these awful names we, we give these, uh, you know, it's, I'm sure they are very, um, have very important meanings. And we use some of these names that we probably shouldn't be using, but it's, it's fun to record these sites and it's a necessity uh, to record a lot of these petroglyph sites because many of them are deteriorating due to vandalism or natural deterioration. Um, now Brantley, uh, the owner, has stopped a lot of this, you know, vandalism with his uh, control of access to this place. But of course, we can't stop, you know, the natural degra degradation, so. That's why probably a lot of this should be recorded and also recorded for the Hopi and, uh, and Zuni people for their, for their own records and for their own teachings into their young, for their young. And to continue on with their religion. So this area is the end of the line which will conclude my tour for All today. All right. All right. Yay! Bravo. Yay! Omache kato sa usataya kana kosa. Huma, huma ke.